Security Talk 9. It's time. That'll have to do for the intro. Oh, and by the way, this episode is brought to you by Skittles, your quick route to diabetes. Starting it off today, we have Popcorn Time Ransomware. This is still in development, so I haven't been able to get my hands on a sample yet. But here's what you need to know. This ransomware encourages you to be a scum in order to get a free decryption key. If you manage to infect enough of your friends and they end up paying, then you get your decryption key for no extra cost. So it's kind of like an adware affiliate thing. That's what we need, right? I can't imagine who would want to do this. Oh, wait. I can. Another interesting thing about this threat is that it does not allow you to brute force the decryption key. So if you enter the decryption key incorrectly for like four times, it is going to delete your files forever. As you can see, the encryption screen is kind of like the Windows update. Reminds me of the ransomware Phantom. Well, that's all there is to it, but this has been making headlines in a lot of places because of the obvious new feature. I don't know how this is going to work, but I think there are just enough terrible people in this world for this kind of thing to work out just fine. So, well, let me know in the comments what would you do if you had the option to infect your friends and get a free decryption key. After all, friends are supposed to share in your misery, aren't they? <laughs> Ah, oh, crap. On a brighter note, No More Ransom, the conglomerate of security companies and law enforcement agencies, just got bigger and better. If you're not aware of this, No More Ransom is an initiative by Europol, a lot of other police departments, and some cybersecurity companies to take down ransomware. In some cases, you can find out the decryption key by reverse engineering and analyzing the threat in question, mostly when there is symmetric encryption being used. But in some cases the encryption is asymmetric, like RSA, and the key is stored in the command and control servers. In those cases, it is almost impossible to break into the ransomware without getting access to the cybercriminal's lair, or where they keep their data. But thankfully, since there are some law enforcement agencies at work here, they can actually raid the ransomware servers if they can identify its location. They have successfully managed to decrypt several threats, and if you are a victim of ransomware, you should totally check out their project website. They have a lot of decryptors all under this one page, and this is kind of the safe haven for ransomware victims, if there is anything like that. Germany has threatened Facebook with a 500,000 euro fine per every fake news post that they fail to take down. That to me seems like an extreme step, and uh, the whole fake news thing can be a very slippery slope into a dystopian society. And there are obviously two sides of the argument here. Some people feel that fake news should not exist, and these kind of steps need to be taken to ensure that online communication remains reliable. There's another side to this, and that's the whole freedom of speech thing, that who decides what is fake and what's real? We still have vast majorities of people in certain countries who believe in things which just aren't factually true. There are people who believe the Earth is flat. There are people who believe in alternate medicine, which has been shown to not work. There are all kinds of crazy ideas going around. Not all of them appeal to only a minority of people. What if a particular majority thinks the fake to be real and the real to be fake? And that is a concern, um, especially when the people taking these decisions aren't necessarily the best informed people. Of course, um, I know the whole context here. They're just talking about news like PewDiePie died, crap like that, but it might be a slippery slope as well. I'm not gonna say too much about it. There are way better people than me who are talking about this kind of thing, and they have supplied very interesting arguments. I'd like to hear yours. Now it's time for some fun. So, um, Kaspersky have a very interesting quiz. 
in which you're asked to distinguish between a cyber threat and a biological threat. You might think that, hey, this is easy, I can do this, I know what a virus is, but um, let's get started and let's see how well you do. All right, you're with me? So here's the first question. This bad guy makes victims fall crazy in love with cats. Is it a computer virus or a biological parasite? What do you think? The answers are very interesting, it's biological, and the second one is it's a cyber threat. Half the internet is infected. I'll give you like five seconds. I bet most of you are leaning towards the second option, right? I mean, you don't even need to call it a cyber threat. That's basically YouTube. But guess what? It is actually biological. And the phenomenon is called toxoplasmosis. So in this case, there's a parasite that can reproduce inside the cat's body, and therefore it needs the cat in order to survive. That's really crazy. And an estimated 60 million people in the United States are infected. Can you believe that? And I bet most people didn't even know about this. Let's move on to the next question. This do-gooder infects the carrier, gets rid of other viruses, and teaches it how to stay safe. So, do you think this is biological, or do you think this is malware? Doesn't sound like malware, right? Actually, wrong again. This is malware, and um, this particular threat is Wi-Fatch, which is a threat on Linux. And by the way, for everyone who's like, Linux doesn't get viruses, Linux is totally secure, that is not at all true. The reason you probably don't hear about Linux malware as often is because Linux is not primarily used as a desktop operating system, it is used in web servers. So um, the discussion about Linux security kind of stays with the nerds and the geeks and it never really leaves that. If you've been following the tech news, you probably know about a lot of bad things going on with Linux as well. But that's a discussion for another day. I would strongly encourage that you um, go through this quiz. It might show you a lot of things that you didn't expect and you might be surprised. The next article is again about a threat. It's called Kill Disk, and it has recently added a ransomware component to make this already deadly tool even worse. So this has been used in cyber espionage and sabotage operations and recently targeted against Ukrainian banks. Does that ring a bell? Does somebody not like Ukraine? I don't know. Is there a country? Maybe a leader? I don't know. But you probably know. This is what the ransomware screen looks like. Um, <laughs> quite colorful though. This is not exactly targeted towards home users, so um, it may not be a threat to you, but it is going to attack a lot of banks. And then, you know, the cyber criminals know their target, the amount that they might be willing to pay. So this thing demands $215,000. That's no small amount, but then again, these are banks, so that was to be expected. In terms of the strength of encryption, this uses an AES key and then encrypts the AES key again with an RSA 1028 bit key. So that's some pretty strong encryption over there. I bet they're making a lot of money. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this kind of malware targeting corporate institutions because that's where they can make the most profit. I mean, there's only so much an individual's going to pay for a few pictures, but banks, oh no, no, the sky's the limit. Finally, to wrap this up, we are going to talk about Ransom Free. Now, this is a free tool which can protect you from ransomware. And if we look in the About section, it actually claims to be entirely zero day. So there are no signatures involved. It's fully behavioral, and it's supposed to be good. I haven't tested it personally, but my friend Sam from Malwareblocker has, and it did pretty good, except it did not protect the computer from Petya, so I doubt it's if it's going to work against GoldenEye either. Once again, another tool, I don't think this is perfect or that it is the solution to ransomware, but well, maybe a step in the right direction. I will look forward to testing this out myself, and you'll know the rest when it's out.
So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Security Talk. Um, I kept it short because there's some really fun outtakes with Sam that I'm going to add at the end of this video. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. We sure did. Let's check it out. But if it's asymmetric and the private key is locked away on some server, if they're using RSA, then you're pretty much screwed. Unless, you know, law enforcement can raid their servers and take out the cyber criminals. This might work in some places, but good luck doing that with ransomware like Shade. That's totally gonna work. Hey Putin, can we raid some, uh, some ransomware servers, please? I hear that you like infecting people with ransomware. Especially Shade in particular. We would like to decrypt the file. Sam, you're, you're so getting arrested after this. You're going to be put in jail. Yeah, I think he's... For saying all oh that. God, he's outside. He's outside. <laughs> he's uh, this is probably going to be the last security talk you're going to join me on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Yahoo um, experienced one of the greatest data breaches in history. Um, this is not exactly news. Apologies for that. <laughs> this is kind of old, but as well, we haven't had a security talk in between, so I guess it's relevant. And uh, one billion accounts were affected. So as it is, Yahoo was kind of struggling, and uh, for a lot of people, this might be the nail in the coffin. They might have to downsize. I'm sure this was a major, major problem for them. I mean, just think about that for a second. That is one-seventh of the world's population. It wouldn't be wrong to guess that at least one guy in our audience has his or her account breached. Has been hacked, yeah. It literally, <laughs> more than one, probably. I mean, there's uh, going to be several So people. just change your passwords, people. If this is still news to you... I mean, the data has probably been shown on the dark web already, so I would have... Uh, <laughs> But it changed my password a while ago. Thank you for watching the show. This is Leo from TPSC. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.